Hey guys, and we're back with the Game of Thrones or a Song of Ice and Fire question of the day. So let's jump into the comments and find a question on the previous video where we talked about would there be a new Nisa Nisa? So anyway, the question I found here is pretty damn interesting as usual. It's a topic I've talked about a little bit before and I'll reference that video when it comes time. But we have Reef Musalam in the comments and Reef says, can you go over how Craster struck a deal with the White Walkers? Now, this is always a great question and a great little conversation because we want to know how the hell the Craster became the guy who sacrificed his kids to remain safe and seems to have some kind of protection from the White Walkers. You got to remember, though, Craster was hated by the Wildlings and the Night's Watch, but it was kind of a mutual thing. They had to use each other in a sense. The Night's Watch went on rangings and brought him steel and wine, etc., and he gave them shelter and passage and all that kind of stuff but also he was hated by the wildlings and they all know he's up to something dirty because they call him evil and dark and all that stuff with black blood in his veins. So for a quick little history on Craster that may tie into why he was able to strike a deal with the White Walkers, let's talk about his parentage. I did another video on this called The Other Secret Parents and I'll link that in the description below. Now it says in the text that Craster is supposedly the bastard son of a Night's Watch Ranger and a wilding woman from White Tree Village. The question is, who was that Night's Watch Ranger? Well, a lot of people actually believe that it could have been Blood Raven, aka Brendan Rivers, the Three-Eyed Crow, or possibly even Maester Aemon. Now one thing people say, well it can't be Maester Aemon because he wasn't a ranger, but that doesn't mean that he never left the wall at some point just like Sam did we saw in an earlier season on the show. Maester Aemon back in his younger days I'm sure left the wall on occasion and you got to remember he does know the love of a woman and of course that's the conversation where he tells John what is duty compared to the love of a woman and all that good stuff. So although Maester Aemon has been sworn to celibacy in his Maester vows for a long long time, doesn't mean he's not human and wouldn't slip up and perhaps uh, get with a woman from White Tree Village at some point. But I think the majority of people think it may actually be Brendan Rivers, aka Blood Raven, the Three-Eyed Crow, because of course he was part of the Night's Watch. He was a ranger for a long time before becoming Lord Commander. And of course, after that, he disappeared beyond the wall and became the Three-Eyed Crow. You know, the old man stuck in a tree. So again, it goes back to a lot of themes in our story about bloodlines. So if in fact, Craster is the son of a Targaryen and a wildling, that means he has the blood of old Valyria and First Men, very similar to Blood Raven himself. And of course, our main character now, Jon Snow, who is a direct result of a union between Targaryen and Stark, Blood of the First Men, Blood of Old Valyria, King's Blood, etc., which is what makes him special in the first place. So maybe that's a prerequisite to becoming a White Walker, and maybe that's why the Night King chose Craster. So what I think Craster is essentially is a kind of a reincarnation, not literally, but kind of a retelling, a repeat of history, so to speak, of the Night's King tale. The Night's King, of course, was the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, who made sacrifices to the others after supposedly falling in love with a female White Walker. So I won't get into that whole story here, but it makes sense that Crasher could be a little repeat of that. And of course, we know now that he has been giving his sons to the White Walkers in exchange for protection, essentially, because they don't fuck with him whatsoever. They leave him be, and they kill every other wilding around. So again, the question comes back to how in the hell could the Night King make a deal with him in the first place? As far as the books go, we do know that from the prologue in A Game of Thrones, they do make these crackling, icy sounds that seems to be mocking of Waymar Royce. So we do know they can speak in some way, but again, I don't think Craster would understand that language. So I basically think we have two options here on how he struck a deal. I think that the Night King, when he first decided for whatever reason we have yet to determine, I think it's possible that the Night King could have actually sensed this power. Think about it, if the Night King is a proto-Stark and he was a Green Seer in life and now has the same abilities because we do know that him and Bran are connected in some way, he seems to be tapped into Weirwood.net. It's possible that the Night King already knew who Craster's parents were, or at least that he has the Targaryen blood required to turn babies into White Walkers, if that is a prerequisite whatsoever, or perhaps even the Stark side of him, the first man blood, etc., just like his own, perhaps that's a possibility. Cold Hands in the show being Benjen Stark, he was the only one from his party that was saved in the same way the Night King was, except he didn't turn to a crazy ice demon. So is it Stark blood that they're able to turn like that? Is it Targaryen blood? Or do you have to have a little bit of both? So that's one option. The Night King knows somehow or knew or maybe saw the past or whatever and knows that Craster was a kind of a perfect candidate for that. The other possibility is, is the Night King came across his little shack in the woods somewhere at some point and kind of accidentally stumbled upon the idea of taking his children and turning them into White Walkers. So it could have been a simple non-verbal kind of an accidental type thing where he came across and kind of looked at a child 
and went over there and took the child from somebody instead of killing somebody. And then from that point, Cratchit just thought, wait a minute, he wasn't interested in killing me and my wives, he was interested in my sons. So I think what I'll do is I'll start laying my kids out here. That way I can keep these sons out of here. I don't have to worry about them. I can have all these wives. And he simply started kind of repeating the process and it just became a thing. So the Night King and the White Walkers that he made from his sons from that point never fucked with Craster because they needed those sacrifices to build their damn army. Now, I don't know if we'll ever get an explanation for this, but I could see like a flashback or something like that that Bran has where we do see the Night King going up to Craster's keep. Maybe he goes to kill one of the wives or whatever, but then he hears a baby crying and looks to that baby and Craster can sense the interest there and therefore he kind of hands over the child in a non-verbal way and from that point they simply repeat the process and it becomes a thing, kind of an unspoken deal but I don't think there was any direct communication because Craster wouldn't be able to understand what the hell he was saying in the first place. And it goes back to what I said, if you think about it in season eight in the show, do you really want the Night King to have a voice? Do you really want to hear him speak? I think that would detract from his character, so I don't think we're going to hear him speak in the show. So I think it probably had to be some kind of non-verbal accident, but I also think it's a valid theory to think the Night King himself being a green seer of sorts already knew when he approached Craster's Keep the first time, whenever that was, that he was the perfect candidate because he does have the blood of Old Valyria and the blood of the First Men. So anyway, that's all I have for today, but let's see what Riddick thinks. Does Riddick think that it was kind of a non-verbal accident, or does he think it was some kind of pre-planned thing by the Night King because of Craster's particular bloodline? All right, on the Stark Dire World paper today for Riddick's choices, I have bloodline and I have random encounter. So let's see what Riddick thinks. Let's ball these up. Ready, pick, ready, pick, pick, pick one. This one? This is the one you want? Okay, let's put that one up. Random encounter. So Riddick thinks it was a random thing in the woods. I guess just had an unspoken agreement at some point. Maybe he just pointed at a baby and just took it. And then from that point on, Craster said, okay, well, I'll just start leaving my kids out. So anyway, thank you, Riddick. I think you're doing good. We'll check back up on Riddick and see how he does after season eight. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below and leave your questions if you want to see your question answered on the question of the day. As usual, thank you for all the support, especially to guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon Smokescreen producers. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support. And to everyone on YouTube, I really appreciate it. If you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like and a share. And be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that damn notification bell. Otherwise, you will not be notified even if you're subscribed so you can check out any videos I release. And that really helps out the channel as far as this new broken YouTube algorithm. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Ooh.